Um, yeah, so welcome everyone to Funk Frog Sweden. This is the third meetup. We had two earlier meetups, one in January where we actually physically met and the second one was online uh, like this one. Um, yeah. We formed the group, I think somebody asked, we formed the group in November last year and then we had the first meetup as I said in January. Um, yes, today's agenda then. We'll have one presentation, unfortunately the other guy backed out. Uh, what could be done to, what could be done as believed to be impossible in F sharp by Oscar? Uh, it's really cool that we also get some F sharp people in here. We have had presentations from uh, around Erlang and Haskell, and now also some F sharp. Um, the community, we love functional programming. We try to spread it and also embrace like we're not in any specific language, more like looking at different type of functional programming. I'm trying to convince the guy that runs the C++ community in Sweden to make uh, to have some demo of like uh, or showcase um, uh, functional programming in C++. Yeah, we're open and inclusive. We like to share, and as I said, let's have fun and spread functional programming. Um, other Beat is the company where I work. We usually make sure we have a venue. Now we don't have a venue, so we have Zoom instead. Um, and again, if you want to share or present at the meetup or have a venue as soon as this corona is over, please contact me, Magnus, or Tin, or Matthias, who's also in, in, this, um, in the Zoom meeting. Just reach out uh, if you have anything, or if you know anybody that we should ping or, or poach. Yes, uh, please use the chat during the presentation if you have questions or just pop up a hand or say hello. What's this all about? Um, with that, let's, uh, let's start. I will stop sharing and hand over to you. Uh, Thank you. Um... Well, see how how I, how I can yep. stop sharing share screen. Yes, there we have it. I'll stop my video. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Let's see. Sure. Um, can you see stuff? Yep. Okay, that's good. Um, so let's start with the presentation then. Um, so what if we imagine F sharp as uh, more than what it is? Uh, and I would like to say that there is a lot of a, th a lot of things to love about F sharp, but what if we can go further? And uh, if you want to go further, then there is F sharp plus. And uh, this presentation is about um, a library I've come to uh, appreciate more and more. And uh, usually I use it in order to sling together private projects, proof of concept applications, and uh, pseudocode as code. And uh, if we look at F sharp at a first glance, it's a good uh, functional first or second language as uh, Don Syme, the creator of the language would say. It's also a nice language with a lot of less ceremony than in say C sharp or VB. And uh, so you can get a lot of mileage out of the language but if you, uh, but you can get into uh, a lot of things that when it's when you feel a bit restricted compared to other languages, and um, then there is like also the thing about abstractions. Uh, in order to understand things, we need to be able to talk about things, and we need to be able to analyze the abstract concepts that are available to us. And 
I would like to co uh, quote uh, Bohr um, about this. To think is to forget the difference, to generalize, to abstract. And I think this is really important around how we build software. And in order to illustrate this point, I have this picture and it sure looks like a mess and, uh, but don't be uh, disheartened by, by, the, by the amount of uh, noise in this picture. In F sharp plus, you have the ability to, uh, to uh, be able to simulate type classes and, uh, and you get to be able to use a lot of these abstractions and you're able to um, analyze and understand a lot of things through these abstractions, similar to how you would be able to use uh, the Gang of Four patterns. Um, and to be honest, I have not grokked all of these uh, concepts and I've not grokked all of the Gang of Four concepts either. And, and not all of the, these uh, concepts will be uh, applicable for your business code, but being able to use them in, um, in different contexts can be quite useful. Uh, one way to use, use these concepts is to, uh, to be able to get like an overview and a, a, an idea about how code works. And this is actually, a sort of dense view of how Suave, a F-sharp functional uh, web framework works. And the, and the code here is very, very dense, but it captures how Suave works using F-sharp plus um, um, helpers. And don't be worried if you don't understand this, it took me a while to grok Suave by reading the code and, and uh, grokking that and uh, F sharp plus. But uh, so it's, um, but the thing about being able to boil it down to this picture or to, the, to these few abstractions is kind of helpful, at least for me. Then there is monad transformers and monad transformers well, I didn't think that they were possible in F sharp either, but, and uh, when I started out coding F sharp, um, I looked at the library where it's like 10 to 20,000 lines of F sharp in order to get uh, many of the combinations of practical monads. And that's kind of un unmaintainable. Uh, while in F sharp plus you, you, you get a lot of the monad transformers. And uh, however, you might not want to compose more than a few because the compiler doesn't handle, um, handle it well, though you can use uh, F sharp plus to implement combinations of monads. Um, and um, one of the maintainers of uh, F sharp plus um, is looking at doing that in order to, uh, to, to uh, let you get some mileage out of like some better per compiler performance uh, for very common use cases. Then there is generic lenses and generic lenses, um, there in, C in C sharp you can use uh, in uh, Haskell parlance, uh, data lenses while, uh, okay, some question in, okay, basically you can use like a simple style of lenses while in uh, F sharp, you can go further and uh, it's kind of, and uh, there are some benefits. I, to using lenses and the, the main benefit of using lenses is that you can deal with highly nested immutable data. Um, then there is, are, the, are the free monads. Free monads, if you look at, uh, for instance, Mark Seaman, uh, you'll see that 
there, um, his example of uh, uh, free monads in F sharp contains a lot of boi boilerplate, but uh, we can go into uh, the repository of F sharp plus and see that there you can actually get a lot less boilerplate by uh, uh, by using this library. And uh, so the, by using a lot of these uh, um, uh, tricks, you can get some mileage. And I'm not sure if uh, free monads are really useful in F sharp, but maybe they are. We'll see. Um, so, what are the practical implications of uh, of uh, extending these la uh, this language like F sharp using a lang language? Uh, like the language gets extended by a library, that's kind of mind blowing in itself. And what are the practical implications of that? Well, you get generic operators in F sharp plus, you get less infrastructure and more in F sharp plus, and you get sort of pseudocode as code. And uh, I want to finish on that, stop talking a bit and um, yeah, like start answering questions or talk about like, okay, so what are the things? So what are these things? Let's talk about them. Um, any questions? I guess I, I, I would, I'm wondering, uh, the type classes that you mentioned, um, monad transformers and, uh, and the others, are they, would you say that these are commonly used constructs uh, in F sharp code or is it kind of like over in Scala land where you have the people who, who code with Scala Z and so on, use all of the Haskell stuff uh, and then you have the other Scala code, which is just Java plus a, plus a little bit more. Like, uh, what would you say the usage of these things are in, uh, in the F sharp ecosystem? Uh, in the F sharp ecosystem, I think like the majority of uh, people would use like the simplest possible constructs. Like they use some monads and stuff, but they, they wouldn't use any monad transformers. Uh, there has been a lot more interest around monad transformers because they are kind of useful when you when you get in order to reduce a lot of boilerplate. Um, there has been a, a lot more interest in F sharp plus um, yeah, later um, than uh, there in the you there was previously and. Uh, um, so that, that's kind of neat as well. Uh, in the same vein, uh, would you say that uh, F sharp plus is, uh, if one is interested in these concepts for F sharp, that it is the library to explore, that it is the library that would be used? Uh, for sure. Like um, the, the um, like, F sharp plus sort of collects all of these constructs and makes them useful in one library. So it's uh, so so in that way, it is the the la library. And uh, um, I like. Um, There, um, like it's uh, it's uh, it's a pretty neat library. Like a lot of the things you you think you know about the .NET uh, platform turns out to be not true, and that's kind of uh, 
kind of an interesting feeling. Like it's uh, F sharp is a more competent language than you might imagine. And uh, like, it's not only a nicer C sharp, it's, it's actually a way cooler language than that. Are there like some clear cases where, uh, where there's, uh, can be demonstrated through code or uh, was there some example part of the uh, presentation that? Uh, um, well, I, I prepared some examples, but um, so we, but uh, I was kind of uh, hesitant about using them since uh, it might have um, uh, taken up a lot of uh, screen space and a lot of uh, energy. But like, if you look at some some really some really typical F sharp, then you would see something. Um, like list dot group by list dot map, and uh, and in and I, and I assume that the the pipe uh, the pipe and less than the uh, the symbol right before list group by uh, puts in the result of the previous line as the argument first argument or the second argument. Um, the exactly. So so that's uh, so you, so you get uh, the normal st style of the. Coding and while in with F sharp plus you get uh, the, the generic operators so that that works on on uh, a wide range of uh, types. Oh, so could you uh, could you explain how that works? So so the top one, uh, wh what's the difference here? Um, does it do some dynamic stuff on the two or like does it use type classes to make it work? Like what happens? What's the difference? Uh, the difference is in, in the second one, it actually does use type classes or emulated type classes in F sharp. Um, the manner it does this is it uses uh, operator overloading and uh, statically resolved uh, type parameters in uh, F sharp in order to get um, an emulated type class and, uh, and to, to make sure that uh, the existing types and future types that implements the same type class um, can, that you can do, do these operations for, for any such type. Uh, now, I, I just have one more question. Uh, assuming uh, I, I'm not getting, uh, I'm quite, I'm not sure if uh, I'm uh, stopping your presentation with a whole bunch of questions. Uh, no, that, so. I think it's great because the, um, this is actually what I wanted. I wanted questions. Uh, well, in that case, uh, uh, should I understand that the top question, the top uh, example being the uh, regular F sharp example, uh, you wouldn't have, you would only have the pipe operator available for a limited set of uh, uh, classes such as list? Well, the pipe operator is generic. So uh, while this guy, is not generic so that or it's not generic over types like it, it's generic over like you can pipe in any list but it, you can't pipe in what not that oh, implement so so you can't pipe in like a uh, a different type of uh, sequence or a collection or uh, you only can use a list so uh, assuming that those are uh, two poles, I take it. Uh, yes. Right. As, so, so if that's a list of two poles, uh, the lower example enabled by the type classes, um, you get the opportunity to pass in anything. And as long as the contents of this list is something that uh, has the uh, whatever type class that is applicable here uh, implemented, that will uh, with static typing be uh, get group by applied and map applied. Exactly. So, uh, 
So if you implement, for instance, your own list type or list like type, then you could do the same operations and get them applied statically. Okay, well, that, that explains this, these examples. Thank you. Um, then uh, there is like composable validation errors. Um, there is a lot of code around this, but basically you can, um, you can glue together a lot of um, different validations using uh, F-sharp plus. And so I, I find it interesting, but maybe not uh, super useful all the time, but it's interesting in a way. What, what would the difference be? Sorry for breaking in again. No, no, go. What, what would the difference be uh, for a simple validation example uh, between making use of F sharp plus and uh, making use of uh, regular F sharp? Well, in regular F sharp, you, you'd use uh, either like the, the C sharp style a fluent interface or you would use a, a attribute style um, uh, validation library or you would use some other validation library but f sharp plus lets you do like aggregate all of those different things into one thing do we do you have for someone that is not uh, familiar with uh, what it looks like in c sharp uh, do you have some example uh, for so that one could uh, compare? Uh, sure. Uh, let's. Okay. Uh, I think it's uh, this library. Um, so th so here we have. Um, this is a typical C sharp example example of uh, where you use attributes. You, you basically glue things onto your uh, models. And, uh, uh, well, the, and that's some, that is some kind of attribute syntax, which like placed in a particular spot, you apply certain attributes to the class. Exactly, like this, this is uh, applied to the class and, and um, and you're kind of restricted in what type of, uh, like you, you can only get certain types of errors from the, this style of validations. Like you, you would only get like maybe an error message or something as a string type or, so it's the, these kinds of things are limit, sort of limited by um, what's available in the in the base of um, while if you use um, like a fl fluent style validations and this is should be familiar to people who have uh, used fluent style validations in java or whatnot you you get you can you can add a bit more content to uh, your validations so uh, the, if I, it would seem to someone who is not familiar with the two languages or is not very used to that, have read, hasn't read much of them, um, yeah. it seems from this example that uh, the fluent validation, which if I understand correctly, is roughly what you can do with F sharp plus, correct? Uh, with F sharp plus, you can do it as functions instead of uh, having a class. So you could, and you can can also have it. Uh, you can also say that okay, the error type or error types can be something else than just a string or a validation uh, error. So you you have a you can use many m many more types of errors than just uh, predefined errors. Okay, so the difference would be like if, uh, but if I would restrict my thinking to to still uh, just going with uh, uh, with string type errors, um, for what I understand, you um, it, with the F sharp plus capabilities, 
you get to instead of having just that list, uh, which we saw in the previous file yeah. uh, of predefined, I guess, standard errors that are present uh, in the standard library, you get to yeah. instead compose uh, these lists in a more flexible way. Is that uh, what I should take away roughly? Exactly. So this allows you to be able to use uh, more, uh, more strictly typed error messages. So, so for instance, you can then say, okay, the, f the failure um, can, is a list of an object that, with, an, with a specific type. So it's, so it's, um, so it's not only uh, like her the door, uh, string list something or object, um, object something, you get an actual type and you know what that type is. Oh, so uh, just to clarify, does that mean that by default, um, there is no way in F sharp, well, uh, unless one makes use of libraries like this, but by default in F sharp, the errors are some error class with a string and that's it. Whereas this would, for instance, allow one to add algebraic data type kind of errors or something like that. Yeah, uh, though you might use exceptions for some of the errors and the, the exceptions you can, you can uh, type those as you want, but uh, you'd, you typically don't want to do, use exceptions for everything and you typically don't want to use algebraic uh, d data type validations for everything or so it's so you need to choose pick and choose what you want for different use cases um, just to give myself some background here um, is it common I, I've uh, I'm not a Java programmer but I've been told that uh, uh, creating some kind of control flow and like uh, code branching with exceptions is not necessarily common, but also not like unheard of. Um, what's the, uh, are exceptions used in F sharp for control flow or like signaling errors and generally like code, yeah, code flow? Is that a common thing or does one rather rely on values? Um. Unless the, what you have is exceptional, usually you try, well, I, I see a lot of code that tries to avoid exceptions unless they are exceptional in the sense that it's, uh, you, re there is, you don't really want to, you want to catch it in the outer layer, so to speak. Like it's, you don't, you don't, you don't want the code to uh, be aware so much about um, what can go wrong because it's it goes wrong horribly or or something like that. It's uh, while in uh, more when if um, but uh, yeah, some people use exceptions in F sharp um, or control flow, and some people. Use, don't use as much exceptions at all. Depends on uh, sort of uh, the company and the style and the people involved. Seems. Um, as a as a minor follow up question, this uh, um, does F sharp plus in some way. With, its with the various facilities that it introduces as a library, does it change the way one works with exceptions in F sharp or, or does it simply add a few extra utilities for making it uh, more comfortable? It adds an ex some extra utilities in order to make uh, some of these things more comfortable. So it, it doesn't really, like you still use exceptions for certain things, same as in Haskell, um, but um, 
you still but, but uh, for for the cases when you don't want to use the exceptions and but you instead want to use a, like a validation or a result type then you you can get some benefit of f sharp plus uh, is there a Within these, uh, in this Jupyter notebook, do you have an example which we could see of that? Of um, like the result type or would? Uh, I guess a difference in, uh, in exception handling, like this is how we would be in F sharp and this is how it would be in F sharp plus. Yeah, let's see. Um. So, um, so this is how it would look if you are um, using, um, say, uh, um, fluent validations in F sharp, and um, if you compare that to um, C sharp, there there are some some differences in that you need to end the fluent chain. Um, in so the, while um, and note also that you have a, a, a an object that implements a validator so so this is a type that uh, that lets you validate while if you're using more of an f sharp plus style you're really trying to compose um, validations into um, into um, something bigger. So it's uh, so I'm curious because you uh, you pointed out like here's an object that is a validation uh, and uh, and yeah you you use the word validation a couple of times uh, whereas my question started in exceptions so that makes me curious of uh, why why did it slide into validations is that a common way of of handling potentially exceptional circumstances is because uh, i'm no, not familiar that, with it no like validations is more when you're um probably i'm just confused so let's like you can do um try catch in f sharp and uh, I basically it's uh, is it's what you'd expect from um, from like many languages. It's uh, uh, the, this is the way you you'd uh, typically do it, and uh, so it's um, and this and this just mat matches on the uh, exception class exactly. Okay, and the exception uh, class is just, uh, so when you previously said that uh, the exception class um, was, one would construct uh, in regular F sharp code, one would construct uh, exceptions with, um, uh, with like the exception class and then the, some uh, string to go with it. Um, here, one with the F sharp plus, one would have the opportunity to have uh, Ma be matching against something more complex and potentially pattern match out some bits and pieces even would that be possible well you can actually do have more complex data in exceptions since exceptions are still they are uh, they are entities and you can put like anything in these entities but they are not you a consumer of your api wouldn't know like if you see this divide one, you wouldn't expect it to uh, say, like, how do you know if it throws an exception? You don't, like, it's not in, like in Java where you have checked accept, accept, exceptions, you, you'd uh, get some exception and then yeah, maybe someone uh, catches, this, catches it in the end. Whereas if you use something like the result type uh, F sharp, um, you'd have have a 
a type that represents a OK or error case. So it's, uh, and that's fairly different than the validation type because it's not, uh, um, you, you don't expect to be able to aggregate on, um, aggregate errors in for, for this type. While in for validations, you'd, ex you'd expect uh, to be able to do that kind of thing. And are the, is the, let's say, interaction with the result type, which I'm assuming if one was to compare it to Haskell is similar to maybe, is this the maybe equivalent or is it the- This is either? the either equi equivalent, but, the, uh, but uh, the names are more, um, chosen in order to to make more sense to programmers like error instead of uh, um, left and okay instead of right because okay. in order to make more sense but uh, and that makes it more uh, geared towards one use case whereas in in the either case you might use it even for other things than just um, what you'd uh, use uh, the result type for. Um, would you say that the ergonomic, that, that there's a sufficient amount of ergonomics uh, built into the regular F-sharp for interacting with, uh, with the result type? Or is this one of those places where, uh, where it's definitely useful to be making use of uh, F-sharp plus? I'd say that that de depends. Like uh, I've found uh, use for uh, F sharp plus, and I've uh, written projects in without F sharp plus. And uh, yeah, I'd I'd say I I like not having to write as much code, but uh, the ergonomics in standard F sharp is uh, it's totally fine to uh, to um, to work with the result types without uh, these agronomics. Uh, hi, um, can I add something? Um, uh, hi, I'm a ghost, I'm, I'm, I'm one of the authors of the library. Um, just uh, want to add to what Oscar said, is that um, in standard F sharp, it is also standard to use to the result type uh, uh, but the F sharp doesn't provide uh, many helper functions for it. And more importantly, it doesn't provide a computation expression for uh, result. So, so this is a, I think this is a big selling point for, for the library. The library. Um, could, could you clarify what you mean by computation expression in this, uh, in this uh, case? Like if I had a, if I had a yes. result, which uh, let's say has uh, an okay and a value, I don't know, uh, an integer for instance, what would a computation expression be on this? Yes, uh, computation expression, uh, I don't want to hijack uh, the talk, but uh, no, no, uh, just, just a quick answer. The computation expression is, for those uh, coming from, uh, from Haskell background, is like the do notation. For those coming for, uh, from C sharp, it's like link. More or less, no, it's not uh, exactly the same. The rules are different, but uh, that's uh, uh, in a few words how it works. Like, uh, so when you when you have like many functions that uh, returns uh, uh, on uh, uh, result type in, instead of a direct uh, type and, and exception, as Oscar explained and you want to combine them, typically you will use a computation expression for that. And, uh, and there's no computation expression provided uh, out of the box uh, for, uh, for Asia. So you have to resort to libraries. And there are libraries uh, around that uh, they have different implementations which are not consistent, uh, they don't follow strictly some rules. Uh, F sharp plus uh, follow some rules for all computation expressions, not just for uh, results. So once you learn it and you see the general concept, it's easy to reason about it. 
And the, the other advantage is that uh, because of what uh, Oscar showed before about mono transformers, it is easy to use uh, this uh, result type combined uh, with other effect, like uh, for example, typically async. You know, like uh, if you could, uh, could we get to see this on screen, like an example of uh, making use of uh, the computation expressions or uh, the mono transformers, uh, like how um, they, what they look, and so but then one can easier see uh, the benefits of it. Yeah, I hand over again to Oscar. I'm sure he has some examples. Uh, uh, um, yeah. Uh, well, in the in the documentation, there are some. Yeah. Um, so, like this is uh, a project proof of concept, not meant to be used, but. Uh, um, let's see. I think I've used. Um, Um, like if we look into uh, the suave part, we see what I talked about earlier, how suave is structured. And then I use uh, this monad transformer option T uh, together with async in order to, uh, in order to compose it. Um, in regular code and uh, let's say uh, some of this like this is uh, these this 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 part of uh, the code is where i'm using it so this is for instance uh, some of the code i'm using it in there are better examples out there um, and uh, in the f shop Plus uh, library, there is some like. But yeah. if you but if you show that example again, um, so the monad transformer would be the function with which you take a result, for instance, of an integer, and you would move it to some other to from result to some other kind of uh, type class. Like, how would that be applied? Because I see you have. You're making use of it some uh, in lift M, I assume. Like how uh, how is, is it applied, and what's the effect? Um, as you can see here, I'm um, making sure that this thing goes into uh, into this uh, the combined monad and. Uh, and then, in order to, and then, in order to use it, and I think uh, Gustavo, who is better at these things than me, could probably explain explain it a bit better. So, well, yeah, but well, first of all, I would say that's a computation expression uh, for those who are more familiar. With, uh, uh, so, so, line one hundred and twenty. Uh, could we bump up the font size? Just, just yes. Yeah. Well, let's see. So. So yeah, for those who are not familiar with F sharp, which uh, probably uh, is the case. Uh, so line 123, uh, agent is some uh, some object I take it, or some some uh, struct, some or some data with uh, an op is it a method get auctions? With a method. Okay, and and that pipe then returns the auctions. And there it says lift m sum, so it uh, so it moves that value into a sum constructor. Is that roughly it? Yes, exactly. So it uh, it creates out of a single value a value within an option, and then it pipes it to option t. Uh, so it uh, it does uh, transform it with a with the another monad, uh, the underlying monad, which I I fail to to see here, which is which is the other monad. Maybe Oscar can uh, yeah, they are the... just roll over uh, the uh, 
Can yeah. Yeah. Ah, okay. So yeah. It's an async. Okay. Yeah. So I, I guess your function is returning an async value already. Yeah. 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 So, so if you go back to the code, then you yeah. So you, the, this function uh, get options uh, re returns a, a list, I think, but uh, asynchronously. So it, re it returns an async. Yeah, no, but don't roll over there. Uh, roll over on get options, and then you will see the, the, the actual types. Yes, there it is. Async of list of options. Okay. So then uh, we lift that into the option monad. Async is, already, is also a monad. So here's the combination. Uh, he lived into sum and then in option p, and uh, and then yeah, and then now if you go to uh, now yes, if you go to the right side of the assignment and you see option list type, because this is a computation expression, then uh, it get bound to the pure value without the fx, without async an option. See, it is a list of options. That's, uh, and, and then we can combine this value with the other values. The same way it works with link. In link, it's more or less the same. You use a list, and then uh, you are able to combine the individual values of the list on the left side of the expression. And, uh, and yes, that, well, this uh, and, and on this particular line, where would the um, I, I understand that this is a very simple example of, of so I'm not expecting miracles here, but right here would could one see some usage of uh, uh, F sharp plus that would change this line or is it already being used here in some way that it would not be possible? With yes, exactly. Power. Well, this um, mono computation expression, it comes from the library. F sharp doesn't provide any computation expression, only provides two computation expressions, one for sequence and one for async. That's all he provides. So this library provides mono, which works uh, for any mono. It works for async, for sequence as well, but it works for list, for uh, options, for results. Uh, yeah for free monads uh, or for your own monad if it implements the right method as well. And since it works uh, for monad transformers, also works for a combination of those monads, which is a problem that is, if you, if you see the, the average f -sharp developer when he start, uh, first learn the language, then you discover a computation expression, but at some point when he become advanced, at some point he, he asked the question, how can I combine two monads? Because it's a typical problem and there's nothing in the language to, to do that. And then you have to resort to libraries that, that, that one library does it in a way, another library does it in another way. Here, it is a standard way. It is so standard that it's generic. And in this case, so computation expression, the, the thing that's missing would be, if I understand you correctly, the capability of the computation expression being everything between the braces, in essence. Exactly, right? yeah, exactly. So the, 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 the standard way in F sharp is you define your computation expression. So that's what uh, the author of F sharp uh, pretends, you know? like everybody defines its own computation expression. But defining a computation expression is not an easy task. It's quite complex, uh, especially to get it right. It's, it's quite complex and it's a lot of boilerplate after a while. Once you get it right, then the other ones are more or less the same, just change the types and the, and the functions that behave the same. So uh, I, I think more than the boilerplate, uh, from my experience, is the, the possibility of, uh, of getting it wrong and discover it uh, maybe later when you use some advanced function inside the computation expression. The computation expressions um, from FR are very nice and they're very advanced. I mean, uh, I think this, um, they, if you compare it to link, yeah, they have a lot of more uh, commands that get uh, the server. Uh, and if you compare to Haskell as well, because Haskell is pure, so it doesn't need that much, but the F sharp since it's, 
it has a side effect and interact with .NET. It has a lot of construct for uh, uh, using a disposal and uh, using exceptions in, inside a monadic context. So they are quite complex. It's not. Uh, it's quite nice to use it, but uh, it's it's not it's not easy to to define your own. You have to be first of all. You have to be an advanced F# -sharp programmer. And even being uh, an advanced f -sharp programming is quite easy to uh, to get it wrong. So I think that's uh, one of the values that uh, we see here in this example. I have a question uh, regarding this. Uh, I'm Christian, by the way. Uh, I've been doing f -sharp for like one year or something now. And uh, I'm, I've been like in general kind of in functional programming or in, in Haskell or in, in F sharp that has this computational expression or do notation. Uh, what, what is your like view of using that? Uh, like, is there some general known like time to use it because some if I'm like negative about it the only thing I've noticed is that it becomes like it starts to feel like uh, imperative programming even though they are kind of it's, it's kind of connected but I know it can be useful when things are a bit nested and you don't want to have a lot of scopes in, in like a pipeline yeah. flow do you yeah. get what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, your question is, I, I think, is more philosophical. Like, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The philosophy yeah. behind the computational expression. Yeah. And I remember there were some discussions like five years ago in Reddit, in Pascal mainly, saying that uh, notation is evil. And uh, yeah, but I think finally the conclusion is that it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, yes, it looks like imperative. It's true, uh, but uh, behind the scenes, it's all uh, pure. I mean, mm. yeah, I know. Use monads. Monads is a way to uh, model uh, effects. You know, effects in general, like imperative effects, like uh, doing an I/O or an async or uh, spreading a state. All. All the things that break the purity uh, in in functional uh, it, monad is the best abstraction that captures that. So that's why, obviously, it looks like imperative code. You know? So that's yeah. I don't know if that answers your question. Uh, yeah, kind kind of. <laughs> uh, yeah, or... it's the answer. You will have to discover yourself, but I. My hint, uh, my personal hint is that uh, uh, if you play a bit with monads, you will mm. see that they uh, abstract effects, uh, like uh, in side effects. You know? It's the way to do side effects in a pure way. And the value of doing it in a pure way uh, versus doing directly in an imperative uh, uh, system or language, uh, like you can write the same code in a is that here you have a, a type guarantees. Like uh, you can see here by rollover, we know exactly which effects are occurring. We know that there is an option to say, oh, okay, so this can fail. Yeah. You know? And uh, in other language, you don't know. It, yeah, maybe the, yeah, except as Oscar mentioned at the beginning in, in, in Java, you have check of exception, but other than that, you don't know which effect is occurring. You don't know if, if it is, doing the side effect of your function here, you can see the side effects in the type of the function. Yeah, I, I, I totally buy that. It was more the kind of, uh, like you can do exactly this same code here with with like, a, like pipe operators and kind of just passing through different functions doing like uh, map and uh, bind that's more the comparison. They also show the side effect, but it's it's the I don't know what it's called 
it's not using the computation expression it's more of a pipe flow yeah exactly yeah well so it, it's that comparison they are both handling side effects and they are both uh, pure yeah, regarding that what i would say is that uh, yeah um there are other abstractions that uh, don't require computation expression and there was some uh, yeah, some uh, discussions about it like one or two years ago in 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 the F sharp chat because uh, F sharp seems to be uh, geared toward monads like uh, mm. by providing only uh, computation expression for modeling monads and uh, but now the, in the new version it will include uh, computation expression to model uh, applicatives and, um, and and here in in F sharp plus there are uh, this is just one thing that it provides. You know, like it looks like a big thing, but it's only one thing, like a computation expression. But you also have generic operators, and uh, yeah, uh, I personally like, for example, for validations, I prefer to do it in a in the applicative style of operators, as uh, as we we seen like uh, uh, in the first uh, sample. Uh, I think it reads better, uh, but some people prefer to do it uh, with a, with a computation expression. Now the problem was that uh, up up to date doing that has also a penalty because it's using a monad which is uh, more powerful than applicative, and uh, for validation you don't need a monad, so it's um, and uh, and you are paying that penalty. But now with F sharp five, uh, you will be able to write the same, almost the same as a computation expression, but using a different keyword. You will use behind the scenes an applicative, and uh, and then you won't pay the price of a monad for that. So it so as as I said, there are two things. Not one is your personal taste, how it reads. I like how this read, for example. You know, like for me. Uh, once you get used to this, uh, you can visualize. Other people, uh, which are more uh, very, very in the F sharp style in the guidelines, they prefer the computation expression for doing this validation. Mm. That's, that's one thing. And the other thing is the performance. But the performance in F sharp five will be addressed. And this library already integrates with this uh, new feature of F sharp five. Okay. Yeah, so um, like any other questions? Yeah, I guess I had one more question uh, uh, to go circle back to a previous topic, which was um, um, you mentioned, uh, excuse the motorcycle outside of my window. Um, the, you mentioned something along the lines of um, F sharp is a language which you perceive to be something that can be much more than what average programmer perceives. Um, I, I guess I would want to flip that and ask more about like, how would you say the average F sharp code base uh, is like, is it tr trending toward a C sharp plus a little bit more, or is the average F sharp code base something that tries to implement more functional concepts? Um, like, what's the baseline from which something moves over toward uh, F sharp plus or something like that? Um, that's a good question. Unfortunately, we don't have as much like information around like the usage uh, uh, for F sharp plus. There's like a lot of the. Uh, usages are in closed source. There is a bit on GitHub uh, that we have found, and uh, there are some interesting examples. Uh, but probably the like the most uh, F sharp source code on GitHub is uh, is not using F sharp plus. Um, well, maybe I should rephrase the question in that case. Um, um, just so, uh, instead of. Um focusing on what the F sharp uh, code bases look like, F sharp plus code bases look like. Um, I'm, I'm interested in uh, 
what would you say that the strictly F sharp, uh, not F sharp plus, like strictly F sharp code bases have uh, have the character of like, like uh, yeah, they exploit uh, a lot of functional concepts and therefore it's obvious that they will at some point want to make use of F sharp plus. It's only natural. Or is it rather that most of the F sharp code bases trend towards something that's basically C sharp plus a tiny bit more because they want it kind of like the Scala situation. Like they wanted a nicer Java. So they, they have a few more things. Yeah, we have both actually in the community as far as I, I, I can see. Okay, uh, well, that, that's what I, what I was wondering. Could you elaborate? Um, like some programmers use F sharp as a nicer C sharp and like, and F sharp is and can be used as a nicer C sharp. It's it's actually, in, in my opinion, nicer to write object oriented code in, uh, since you get a lot less boilerplate um, when you want to write object oriented code. Uh, but at the same time, you have also like another start, another group of F sharp programmers wanting to. Uh, to use more like maybe uh, maybe some small libraries and uh, and but basically the the things that are part of f sharp standard um, but still use some of the more functional concepts and would you say that the f -sharp, as someone who is not very familiar with the language uh, would you say that uh, the functional concepts are, um, uh, let's say, a central part of what uh, the standard library looks like and does, or, is, or does it feel like, like, yeah, this, there's this small bonus part of that's functional, but, and it works, it's nice, but, but really, it's a, it's a bonus. Like, would you, how would you characterize the language? Um, I would characterize it as uh, like the standard library, um, F sharp core, um, is um, functional and uh, like the and uh, like a lot. What the library does is give you give you some of the basic things. But since this is for all of the F sharp programmers, uh, adding things to the base library will take a lot more time so so usually you don't get like all of the all of the things part of the f sharp core library while for other libraries you can add uh, other things in a faster tempo and that's what we do have in uh, like if we go to fs projects yes and that's what we get in f sharp plus but would, uh, would you say that the development of the language, like over a long period of time, uh, trends in the direction of maybe adopting piece by piece more concepts that one could say, oh, you, you find these over in F sharp plus, like it's moving in that direction. Is that some kind of trend that's present uh, in the development of F sharp? Or would you say that it's not really the case? Well, I don't know, actually. Uh, uh, in my opinion, uh, I, I think it's natural for every F, uh, FP programmer that at some point needs this concept. No, I think uh, there was a, there was a drawing like uh, uh, circulating by Twitter like two, three years ago about the evolution of the uh, functional programmer. No, like starting with the uh, functions and then with the uh, monads and ending with a uh, very advanced concept like categories or very abstract stuff. And uh, it's uh, like uh, at some point it's natural that everybody wants to do some more. Uh, and then they hit the barrier of the language and the type system in the case of F sharp. I think in, in F sharp, this is my personal opinion. Like I think that we have a bit more of the people that use it as a better C sharp, because uh, although it's functional and uh, we still have the 
the constraint of the type system. We don't have a higher kind types like in Haskell, which allows us to generalize over generic types. And uh, oh, so, so higher kind of types are emulated completely, or like? Uh... Yes, this library emulates a lot uh, higher kinds. You know, it has a lot of operation that uh, behind the scenes are represented a higher kind, but they are not. So but something, so something like a result, or uh, I don't know what's what is maybe called uh, in. Uh, yeah, for example, in this uh, abstraction uh, diagram, we see monad which is the abstraction that is represented for the computation expression. Well, the computation expression is generic. And if we were uh, wanting to express the type of these uh, operations, like for example, let's take a map, like uh, we can't express the, uh, the real type of map because it, it's not representable in .NET. Uh, we need a generic of a generic, and um, that's something that does not exist. Still, it works because it uses overloading behind the scenes and gives you the illusion that you are using uh, uh, a higher kind, no? but, uh, but it doesn't exist, I mean, not in the type system. The type system doesn't see it as a higher kind. And if you add an overload that uh, doesn't respect uh, these rules, it will work as well. And then you, yeah, then you will mess with, uh, with your code base at some point. No? But uh, but it's, uh, there's nothing in the type system that prevents you to do that. But would, you, think, would you say that it's still uh, that the language as a foundation is still flexible enough to? I mean, in a in an acceptable fashion, provide these Haskell-like interfaces. Like, does it still do a decent job? Can one still work um, and feel like this is okay? Yeah. Well, the thing is that the F sharp uh, has, like, a, I think, it's kind of a unique feature that is uh, it doesn't exist on C sharp because it's not. It's a feature from the compiler, which is this. Um, a static resolver type parameters, which are not higher kinds, but are type par uh, parameters that are resolved uh, at compile time and they ex uh, expose some constraints. And that's what we explore here you know, in order to do this. For example, if you see these uh, operations in Mono, like the map operation again, let's put it an example, this map operation. Uh, the generic uh, function map will require that the type you're using has a static member called map and uh, and uh, yeah um, yeah we can see it here mm. um, while well, here we see for example return it requires a static member called return that uh, takes a t and here's the tricky part, it returns a monad of T. And this monad T is like a theoretical type. It, we can represent that in the type system, in a .NET type system. No? But monad express, your monad goes here of that T. Um, so that's, uh, that's the way it work, uh, this unique feature from f -Share, which was initially designed to uh, to provide a way to solve the generic arithmetic operations, like, uh, uh, for example, the plus uh, operator uh, in, in other languages, uh, like OCaml, it works only with integers. Then you have a different operator for floats. And uh, in C sharp, it's, it's a different story because they use uh, automatic conversion behind the scenes. You know? like, uh, but uh, here, it, uh, there's no magic conversions. Uh, what happening when you are uh, doing addition uh, in F sharp is that uh, it's using these uh, constraints. You know, like plus is defined as uh, a type that has a static member uh, plus, and then uh, with this signature taking two arguments, and uh, so that's how it generalizes addition over different types. 
So this library takes that feature to the extreme and use it not just for arithmetic operation, use it for more abstract uh, operation. That's how it works. And coming back to the original question, yeah, there's, uh, there are never ending discussions with the F-sharp community, whether F-sharp should be, uh, uh, code base should be simple, like uh, easy to follow and not using over complicated abstractions. I think there, there is not a single answer. My personal opinion is there is not a single answer for that. Like, uh, of course, if you are working in a company and the, the average developer is a newcomer to functional programming, better to avoid that and do some uh, uh, use simpler abstractions and maybe repeat yourself or do stuff well, like but that. This is, a, this is a discussion that is, uh... Uh, never ending, uh, well, not never ending, but certainly frequently recurring over in the Haskell community as well, uh, where oh, really? <laughs> they, uh, over in the Haskell community, if one follows follows their blog posts, uh, there's a frequently recurring discussion of uh, um, what should one consider the to be the um, the um, generally accepted base, like you as a company, and, and other blog posts of. Uh, imply stuff like uh, find you as a company the the limited set of type classes which you think is like this is our base and we don't go above it because that would be too complicated. Oh yes, boring Haskell manifesto is something that I uh, that I very much remember. I believe there was a uh, another guy that I don't quite remember the name of Eduardo something who wrote a similar thing. Uh, so so definitely this. Um, uh, the introduction of these concepts, uh, any community that uh, engages with them uh, seems to eventually find itself to this sort of discussion of like how how far uh, do we want to do we want to set a ceiling um, which we don't want to get beyond so as to not confuse everyone who comes into our code base um, and therefore for instance deciding like no we are not using monad transformers ever that may be a uh, that may be an exaggeration. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah this but, discussion uh, seems to be a yeah. recurring. Yeah, yeah but it, it's, it's for every project. project. Yeah, that's a valid point too. Yes, uh, every project will have this. Uh, this like, do we need? Do we use this obscure library even? Or do do you use like whatever in like like um, in most companies I've worked in. We usually we restrict like we don't use the full features of the language. Usually we do we say, oh, we use this subset. Um, if it comes to JavaScript or if it comes to uh, C sharp or F sharp or Haskell, what not? Usually you select a subset and based on your teammates. Yeah, I think that makes sense. I mean, you have to always look at the context. But it's true that might be a difference between F sharp and Haskell. Like, uh, probably in the same discussion, uh, uh, in F sharp, there are more voices uh, against going to the over complex abstraction than in Haskell. In Haskell, probably because of the uh, powerful type system and the historical link to academic uh, community, there are more voices like trying to push over the complexity. Uh, that's my wild guess. And at the same time, even if you don't use these things in your project, I think it's still useful to know about them because it helps me think about um, C sharp code or like uh, TypeScript code, even though I'm not using it in currently in like the project or something like that. So it's, I, I find these con concepts and uh, abstractions useful even when I'm not even using it, them explicitly in, if that makes sense. Yeah, and uh, I want to add something to that if, if you allow me. I think, uh, what you said is, uh, I remember at the beginning, uh, I've been using F-Sharp since 10 years, and uh, 
the uh, most successful libraries in F# -sharp were like a specific implementation of one of these abstractions. Like uh, someone who is the god programmer, like uh, grabbed these concepts and was able to follow maybe a Haskell library using it. They did specialize that monad, for example, for uh, as as you showed uh, Swabin. You know, the guy who did that probably realized, okay, well, in F# -sharp I fix it to this type, and then I can write a library that does only this. And yeah, it's very successful. Um, and yeah, the same with uh, those uh, error handling libraries that are around. They take like uh, or maybe async and uh, choice, and then they do a full library around that, that specific uh, specialization of the abstraction. Then the new version of FCR comes with result, and yeah, so that this library is no longer useful. Now there is a, another library that works with result. So, and uh, everybody, like the average FCR programmer, is seeing that library like, wow, yeah, how this, uh, uh, how he created this? Well, the answer is simple because he understands the, the generic concept behind, like, so I like to call the, this kind of library, like F# plus, like uh, okay, now let's socialize uh, all these uh, concepts and make everybody part of it. Like uh, uh, the other libraries are uh, closed, no? Like uh, okay, I'm who created the library, and you just have to use it, but you can uh, play with the types and stuff like that. It speaks to this type. Here. Uh, is more like inviting everybody, uh, as Oscar just said, to, to reason about it and also to learn. Yeah, do we have any more questions? I take that as a no. I just yeah. like think, I'd like to thank the presenters. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That <laughs> was where I'm yeah. going, Mikael. I was yeah, I'd like I, to I was, give like an applause to uh, Oscar for giving the presentation and also Gustavo. Yeah, thank you, Gustavo. The really <laughs> bravo. Yes, bravo. Thank you very much for a very interesting talk and also jumping into another another language than the usual than uh, Haskell or no offense Haskell or um, or Erlang. Um, thank you very much and also thank you Mikael for popping in with questions and thoughts and comparisons and etc. Oh no, it's, uh, uh, I had. Uh... A good presenter that could answer so many questions. So <laughs> you had to ask them. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks everyone for coming, and uh, thanks again, G uh, Gustav uh, or oh, Oscar. I meant sorry. Um, thanks. And if you have anything to present or you want to present, we'll run another meetup. I don't know, August, September, depends on when we find presenters and etc but somewhere there will run it. And then we'll see if we can meet in person or if we have to do it online then also depending on the Corona situation and such. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah, thanks everyone and have a nice evening. Thank, no, you. thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank Bye. you. Bye. 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 Bye.